Our research project is to try and help people who have conditions which involve inflammation of their lungs. And over time, this group of conditions causes scarring, that's fibrosis of the lungs, and they, end, they, they can end up with a, a whole pile of problems which are very similar, actually, to people with cancer of the lungs. But yet, while we know what the problems are for cancer patients, and we have services in place that can help these problems for people with lung cancer, for this group of people with lung fibrosis, that doesn't seem to quite happen. Um, and we need to be able to find out what those problems are, because once we know what those problems are, then we can do something to help. So our project is to test a needs assessment tool, which is a very simple series of questions aimed to try and help the doctor and nurse in the respiratory clinics and the lung clinics to ask patients and carers about these issues, things that are concerned about them, that aren't necessarily about the lung function or the oxygen levels, but more how it's affecting their quality of life, so that over time, and I'm afraid this is progressive, and there's very little we can do to slow what happens in the lungs, that their needs and concerns are dealt with. The aim is to test this needs assessment tool. So we want to see whether it is reliable. That means, do we get the same answers from the tool if one doctor uses it or as another doctor uses it or a nurse uses it? Does it flag up the same concerns and problems? The second thing we want to do is to test whether it is valid. That is, is it picking up the problems that are concerning the patient? because doctors and nurses are very good perhaps at deciding what we think is the problem. We want to find out what the patient and carer thinks as the problem. So at the end of our project, we hope we will have both a reliable and valid tool that can be used in everyday practice. The impact these results could have could be immediate in that there would be a tool that lung, lung teams up and down the country would be able to pick up and use in their clinics. We would like to take it further, but I think further impact would be if we tested this to see whether this then has benefit for the level of address needs. At the moment, this, the, the tool will tell us what the needs are, but we need to take it that next stage further and see whether, therefore, if doctors and nurses use that tool, it identifies the needs and then gets help for the patient. I think, too, for the future, it is a way of identifying what the, the training needs are for that team too. Because if they constantly find there's a particular area that they're referring to somebody else to help with, well, maybe that's something that they want to get extra training themselves. It could also identify that there is a, a service need as well. If they're, for example, they may find they need to employ their own psychologist in the team, or it may be that the hospice services need some further um, resources because the need that's identified and these people who hitherto haven't had access to their services find benefit from it. So I think there's a, a, a lot of opportunities that this could be useful and this is a really crucial first step to find out whether we think it's as good as we think it is. Well Marie Curie has got an extensive track record of funding uh, research and clinical services for people with advanced cancer. And those difficulties that people with advanced cancer have are, are very similar to people with advanced lung fibrosis and the needs that they have and the skills of the services to help address those needs are very similar and so therefore I see a very easy uh, link between the two. I think it's perfect that Marie Curie have agreed to fund this project.